Today on the Way of Holiness broadcast, God's incredible plan not only makes it possible for us to be forgiven of our sins and to escape corruption, but to actually be changed by God's divine nature to become more and more like God. We are being transformed into the same image from glory to glory. In 2 Corinthians 3 verse 18, Jesus Christ promised to live in those that repent, are baptized, and receive the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit is the guarantee of eternal life and is the power that makes it possible for our minds to be renewed and transformed to become like God's mind. Join us and listen to Bishop Marlon Curtis as he brings us the message, Partakers of the Divine Nature. Shalom, greetings, peace be unto you. We thank God for the Way of Holiness broadcast. We appreciate you viewers, supporters. We thank God for what God is getting ready to say. And we thank God for his presence. His presence is everything. Open your Bibles. We're going right into 2 Peter. The book of 2 Peter, chapter 1, and we're going to start at the third, ending at the fourth verse. According as his divine power had given unto us all things that pertain to life and godliness through the knowledge of him that had called us to glory and virtue whereby are given unto us exceeding great and precious promises, that by these ye might be partakers of the divine nature, having escaped the corruption that is in the world through lust. You may have your seats. Those that are taking notes, those that are writing the title down, partakers, remember this, write this down. Remember this, write this down. Partakers of the divine nature. Partakers of the divine nature. As the Holy Spirit was ministering to me concerning this lesson message, brought me into 2 Peter. And he was showing me concerning who we are. We must have a great understanding, a great, not just a good understanding, but a great understanding of who we are. Second Peter chapter one, verse three. According as his divine power had given unto us all things that pertain to life and godliness through the knowledge of him that have called us to glory and virtue. According as his divine power hath given us, has given unto us all things that pertain unto life and godliness through the knowledge of him that hath called us to glory and virtue. Notice what the scriptures is saying. According to his divine power. His divine power. His divine power is Jesus Christ. We must be one with Christ to understand the divine power. If you are living here on earth and your mind, heart, body, and soul is just earthly, you will never understand the power of God. We are living in the divine nature. What is your personality? What is your mindset? What is your attitude? 
I want you to pay attention to verse 3 and 4. Read that again. According as his divine power had given unto us all things that pertain unto life and godliness, through the knowledge of him. Hold it. But it's through the knowledge of Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ is the word of God. It is through the word of God that you will find you. Viewers, supporters, through the word of God, you will find you there. If you are saved, if you are filled with the Holy Spirit. I want you to notice what scriptures are saying about you. But it's through God's knowledge that have called us to glory and virtue. Virtue is your attitude. Virtue is your personality. Virtue is who you are as a true believer. This is your virtue now, is the divine nature. This should be your attitude, your walk, your talk, your mindset. Verse 4, whereby are given unto us exceeding great and precious promises, that by these ye might be partakers of the divine nature, having escaped the corruption that is in the world through lust. Notice the key in verse 4. Notice the key. Having, having escaped the corruption that is in the world. Through lust, have you escaped the corruption? I want to take a minute for you to think about this for a minute. Those that are viewing supporters, viewer supporters, those that are listening, have you escaped the corruption? The corruption is flesh. The corruption is this world. The corruption is Satan. Have you escaped these things? It is something to think about. I want you to really pay attention to this. Have you escaped these things to have the promise of God? Second Peter chapter 1, verse 4. Read that again. Whereby are given unto us exceeding in great and precious promises that by these ye might be partakers of the divine nature having escaped the corruption that's in the world notice what the scriptures are saying is have you escaped the corruption of this world have you escaped satan have you escaped your flesh have you left these things alone If you to have, if you are interested and yearning and hungry for the promises of God, have you escaped these things? Now I want you to turn to Romans chapter one, verse sixteen. Romans chapter one, verse sixteen. For I am not ashamed of the gospel of Christ, for it is the power of God unto salvation to everyone that believeth. Notice what the scriptures are saying. I am not ashamed of the gospel. This is another key to have the promises of God and to have the power of God and to understand who you are. If you're taking notes, write this down. Believing in the word of God and power. Believing in the word of God and power. Read that again. Mm -hmm. For I am not ashamed of the gospel of Christ, for it is the power of God unto salvation to everyone that believeth. It is the power of God unto salvation, but it's only 
to the believer. You must believe in the word of God in order to have the promises and in order to have the eternal life, you must be a true believer. We're not talking about partial believer. We're not talking about a religious believer that only comes and goes. We're talking about a true divine nature believer. You are in the divine nature if your mind, heart, mind, body, and soul is in tune and in sequence with God. Coming to church is one thing, but having the relationship with God is another. True believing in the word of God gets you the promises that the word is speaking about. If you're taking notes, write this down also. Believer's authority. Believer's authority. You have the authority as a true believer when you are a believer in the word of God. You need a taxi, Uber, or Lyft. You call them. And they come and take you to your destination. If you want eternal life, if you want the promises of God, if you want the power that the word of God is speaking about, then you must be a true believer. That's the only way that it's going to be activated in your life. Are you activating the promises of God? Are you activating your faith? Are you activating your believing? It is up to you. Viewers, supporters, those that are listening this morning. Are you activating God? Is God truly in your life? You have the authority. God gave us through his word the authority through Jesus Christ, the word of God, to have all the promises to have the power of God living in our life if we just believe. Now, it's not just believe, but it's just believe in the activation of the word of God. Are you activating the word of God in your life? Give me Matthew 16. We're going to go through some scriptures this morning. Matthew 16, 19. This is what God said to us because he was speaking to the church. Go ahead. And I will give unto thee the keys of the kingdom of heaven. And whatsoever thou shalt bind on earth shall be bound in heaven. Now he was talking to Peter. But you have to look at it deeply. He was talking to the believer, talking to the church. Read that again. And I will give unto thee the keys of the kingdom of heaven. And whatsoever thou bind on earth shall be bound in heaven. What is the keys to the kingdom of heaven? It is the word of God. That is the only key that is going to open the door and the windows of heaven. It is the word of God. Are you believing in the word of God, because the word of God is the key. It is the key to your life. It is the key to your problems. It is the key to salvation. Once you have asked Christ into your life, it just doesn't stop there. It starts and ends with the word of God. I want you to take note of this, that it starts and ends in the word of God. You have authority. Remember this. You have the keys. The keys is the word of God, Jesus Christ. 
is the key. He is the word of God. Give me Mark eleven twenty four. Mark eleven twenty four. Therefore, I say unto you, what things soever ye desire, when ye pray, believe that ye receive them, and ye shall have them. Read that one more time. Therefore, I say unto you, what things soever ye desire. Hold ye it, hold it, hold it. Jesus Christ is teaching. Jesus Christ, the word of God, is giving you a prophetic word that if you take this prophetic word and live this prophetic word and honor this prophetic word and become this prophetic word, there's nothing that God will withhold from you. It is up to you. Read that again. It is up to you. Therefore, I say unto you, what things soever ye desire, when ye pray, believe that ye receive them, and, he, and ye shall have them. Prayer is part of the key. But you have to understand what to pray for. The word of God is prayer by itself. God wants to relate to you, but he relates to his word. Pray the word of God. Talk the word of God. Eat the word of God. Live in the word of God. And things that you ask for will be yours. But it's up to you. Every time you see me, I'm going to tell you, it's up to you. It's up to you. It is up to you. It is up to you. It is up to you. It is, viewer supporters, it's up to you. God gave the blueprint, and it's the word of God, Jesus Christ. But you must understand who he is in your life. Once you understand who Jesus Christ is, then you can understand the authority that you have. Why give the devil a place to live? Scripture says, do not make any place for the devil. Why would you make a place for the devil? And God said, you have authority in your life. So now, when you pray, believe. This is another part of the keys, is believing. If you believe in what you pray, and know that it's already done, those things that you ask for and desire will be yours. But what do you desire? We're going into another area now. Go to James chapter 1. James chapter 1. Start at the 22nd verse and take your time. I'll tell you when to... Start at the 22nd verse. But be ye doers of the word. Hold it. That's a note. If you're taking notes, write that down. We are now doers of the word. If you're taking notes, write that down. We are now doers of the word. So these are the keys of living in the divine nature. Notice what God is saying is that we must be a doer of the word. Believing, praying, have faith in the word, but also the importance is to do the word. It was something concerning the Bible study today concerning this. You are now a doer of the word. Just like you go to work and do the work. Just as you go home and do something to the house to keep it clean or even cook. You are doing those things. Now you are more than just that. You are in the divine nature. 
God wants you to now believe and do the word. Do the word of God and watch your life transform. Many just come to church. Many listen to the word. But they are not doers of the word. God wants you to become and be a doer now. Because you are now in the divine nature. The divine nature is the Godhead. Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit. And the word said, these three are one. So you must become one with God to understand the word of God. If you become one with God, you'll understand the word of God. Watch this. Go ahead. But be ye doers of the word, and not hearers only, deceiving your own selves. Go ahead. Keep on going. For if any be a hearer of the word, and not a doer, he is like unto a man beholding his natural face in a glass. Notice what the word says, that you become, if you don't do the word, you are just one that has a mirror. That's looking at the mirror and see your face, but you could have a pimple. You could have a scratch. You could have a blem blemish spot or, or some dirt or something on your face, but you don't do nothing about it. And all you do is just look at, look at in the mirror. The word of God is the mirror. The word of God will show you and show up the Things that you don't need in your life. Looking at the mirror, seeing the problem, but do nothing about it. Word of God is active. It's alive and well. But you have to know this. You are supporters. You have to know this. If you do not activate the word of God, then the word of God won't activate for you. It thrives off your believing, your faith, your understanding. The word of God is the divine nature. What personality, what attributes are you walking in? Are you walking in the attributes of the word of God? Or are you walking in the attributes of the flesh? It's something to think about daily. I want you to think about this this week. Am I truly in the divine nature? Or, or, or am I just truly in the earth nature? The natural nature? Something to think about. Go ahead. For if any be a hearer of the word and not a doer, he is likened to a man beholding his natural face in a glass. For he beholdeth himself and goeth his way and straightway forgetteth what manner of man he was. You notice that? You, you hear what the word of God is saying? Is that 25? Is that the 25th verse? 24. 24. Keep on going. Mm -hmm. But whoso looketh into the perfect law of liberty and continueth therein, he being not a forgetful hearer, but a doer of the work, this man shall be blessed in his deed. Notice this is the key ingredient. Read that again. But whoso looketh into the perfect law of liberty. The perfect law of liberty is Jesus Christ, the word of God. Many people look at, I have liberty, freedom in this world. I have liberty, freedom on my job. And, and having fun and going on the beach and doing all different temporal things. But we're talking about eternal things. Many people enjoy the temporal life on earth. But I'm looking forward to the eternal life through Christ Jesus. I'm not looking forward to the temporal life. I have pushed that aside, and now 
I am in the divine nature of eternal life. Are you in your mindset, in your life, living the divine nature? Something to think about. You might hear me say that a little bit more often today. I want you to think about this thing because it is important for your spiritual growth. Read that again. But whoso looketh into the perfect law of liberty and continueth therein, he being not a forgetful hearer, but a doer of the work, this man shall be blessed in his deed. Not just a hearer, but a doer. Every day that you went, that God wake you up, I want you to rehearse, I'm a doer of the word. I'm a doer of the word. And a doer of the word, observe the law. Observe the liberty in the law. Observe the obedience in the law. Observe the pleasing in the law of God. Observe everything that the word of God tells you and shows you what to do. Become the doer. And don't undo it. Become the doer of the word and do not undo it. Be careful of your life because your life living now is more important than anything else. Give me Romans 2 and 13 really quickly. Romans 2, 13. For not the hearers of the law are just before God, but the doers of the law shall be justified. It's the doers of the law. Let me explain something to you. There's times where I'll go into a couple of scriptures to make a point. But then there's times where the teaching is so in-depth, you have to go further in the word of God to understand what God really wants. It is not my talk, it's the word talk. I talk word talk. I want you to talk word talk. Viewers, supporters, I want you to talk word talk. Word of God talk. So that you can understand truly who you are and what you are in the divine nature. You're not in the natural nature no more. The flesh nature. You're not in that anymore. You shouldn't be. You shouldn't be. Scripture said in uh, 2 Peter chapter 4, it was talking about the corruption of this world. Have you escaped the corruption of the flesh of what this world holds? Read that again. For not the hearers of the law are just before God, but the doers of the law shall be justified. It is the doers of the law, of the word of God, that's going to be justified. When it's your time to face Jesus Christ, he's going to say to you, well done, my good and faithful servant, because you are a doer of the word. You worked diligently. You didn't, fors you forsake all the things that was trying to come into your life from this earth, from this world. It's important. It is very, very important in these last days that the true church understands what God wants. Understand the revelation of God in the word of God. The word of God is revelation. God gives me the understanding to help you. But it's the word of God that is going to be powerful in your life if you let it. 
Matthew 7, starting at the 24th verse. Matthew 7, starting at the 24th verse. Almost there. Therefore, whosoever heareth these sayings of mine and do them, I will liken him unto a wise man which built his house upon a rock. Read that one more time. Therefore, whosoever heareth these sayings of mine and do them, I will liken him unto a wise man which built his house upon a rock. Go ahead. And the rain descended, and the floods came, and the winds blew, and beat upon that house, and it fell not, for it was founded upon a rock. It was founded upon the word of God, Jesus Christ. Now I want you to take notice to what God is saying here. Therefore, whosoever heareth these sayings of mine, not just hearing, Notice what Jesus is teaching now. He didn't leave it at hear me and then build the house. He said, hear me and then do the house. Hearing is one thing, but doing is another. If you, if you absorb knowledge and understand it, but you don't take that knowledge and understanding and apply it to what you're trying to do, then you'll fail. Jesus Christ is teaching. And he's saying, if you hear my sayings, therefore, whosoever heareth these sayings of mine and doeth them. So we must be doers of the word. I will liken him unto a wise man which built his house upon a rock. Jesus Christ is talking about himself. He was telling Peter about himself. He said, I'm giving you the keys to the kingdom. But he was talking about him, the word of God. And the word of God came, wrapped itself in flesh, and the word said it dwelt among us, Jesus Christ. If we don't observe the knowledge of God, how are we going to truly be powerful in the divine nature? How are we going to absorb things spiritually? that God has for us if we don't observe and acknowledge and rehearse and practice the word of God. Mm -hmm. 25th verse. And the rain descended and the floods came and the winds blew and beat upon that house and it fell not for it is founded upon the rock. It will not fall. Who? The things that God has called you to be. It will not fall. 26 verse. And everyone that heareth these sayings of mine and doeth them not shall be likened unto a foolish man which built his house upon the sand. Go ahead. And the rain descended and the floods came. And the winds blew and beat upon that house, and it fell, and great was the fall of it. Notice what the 27th verse says. Read that again. And the rain descended, and the floods came, and the winds blew and beat upon that house, and it fell, and great was the fall of it. Because the foolish man was a foolish man. He built it the way he wanted it to be built. Many are trying to build a relationship with God, but on false pretenses. Many are trying to seek the power of God walking in false pretenses because they're still operating in the natural realm. You are still operating in the natural realm, then that house, that relationship 
whatever you trying to do for God will not last. It will fall. God wants you in the divine nature realm. He wants your mind, body, and soul in the divine realm. This is how we accomplish the tasks and the work that God placed on us. Notice what happened to the foolish man. Built, tried to build the house, build the house, and it fell. When the problems of life came, it fell. When disappointment came, it fell. Dishonoring God, it fell. Let me, let me address this. You cannot Play with God. You can try to do things under the radar, but God got your number. Just as the foolish man, hear me. You can't mock God. Try to do things under the radar and see what happens. If you don't have the word of God as your radar, detecting everything that's going on in your life, you'll fail. Be careful. God is not mocked. Whatever man soweth, that shall he also reap. Remember this. This is for somebody. God is not mocked. But whatever man soweth, that shall he also reap. So the foolish man said, I'm going to do it my way, not God's way. And when the problems of life and the storms of life and everything, see why he was building the house his way, he thought everything was cool. Everything is all right. <laughs> yeah, I'm doing it my way. But God showed him. And God will show you if you don't be obedient to this word. Jesus says, not only be a hearer, but a doer. The foolish man said, I'm a, I hear you, Jesus, but I'm going to do it my way. You cannot mock God. And if you try, you'll fail. Don't be so anxious. Hear me. The Holy Spirit, be anxious for nothing, but by prayer, supplication, and thanksgiving, let your requests be made known unto God. That's the word of God. But if you move too fast and try to build the house without the solid rock Jesus Christ foundation, you're going to be in trouble. I want you to get this. You'll be in trouble, viewers support. You'll be in trouble. If you're taking notes, write this down. Divine nature is holiness. Holiness is Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ is the word of God. Living in the fullness of the Godhead. Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit. And these three are one. And if you're not one with them, then your house is going to come tumbling down. You got to have all three. First John 5 and 7, it says, For there are three that bear record in heaven, the Father, the Word, Jesus Christ, and the Holy Spirit, and these three are one. Give me Ephesians 2 and 6. Ephesians 2 and 6. And hath raised us up together and made us sit together in heavenly places in Christ Jesus. Jesus Christ was raised. And then ascended to the right hand of God. 
and then came back to live inside of us to show us that we are the church, the believer, the true believer, sitting on the right hand of God. I'm sitting on the right hand of God in the word of God. If you're taking notes, write that down. Sit on the right hand of God in the word of God. If you sit on the right hand of God in the word of God, then what will God withhold from you? That's powerful. If you sit on the right hand of God and the right hand is Jesus Christ, and you're sitting in the word of God that is Jesus Christ, what would God withhold from you? Nothing. Nothing. God will give you that, uh, that power and authority for what you desire. But it's up to you. Remember this. It's up to you. Do you truly want to live and dwell on the right hand of God? I want you to really think about this this week. You will support us, those that are listening. It is about the right hand of God, Jesus Christ, and what he did on the cross over 2,000 years ago. He gave us the authority concerning the death burial, and resurrection of Jesus Christ came back and the Holy Spirit entered because we believe. When you are operating in the divine nature, you are operating in the Holy Spirit. Ephesians 2 and 6 again. And have raised us up together and made us sit together in heavenly places in Christ Jesus. He raised us up to sit in heavenly places. That is the divine nature. Is for us to live in heavenly places. Not the realm of the devil. Many operate in the realm of the devil. That's the dark side. I want you to get this. There's two realms. The light realm, where Jesus Christ operates, and there's the dark realm, where Satan operates. Which realm are you living in? Some live in the light realm where Jesus lived in the divine nature, but then be persuaded by the devil and then cross over to the left hand of God. You better stay on the right hand of God. You better stay in the word of God, and the word of God is Jesus Christ. There's many temptations out here. There's many things that want to enter into your life to take you out of the light into the darkness. I want you to get this. There are many things that creep into your life unaware and try to show you something better than the word of God, Jesus Christ. What is better in Jesus Christ. Many people, hear me, many people are screaming in hell now. I've erred, I've said, I've made a mistake, God. Please deliver me out of here. Hell is screaming right now because those that were there was once, some of them, was once sitting on the right hand of God. But something caught the eye. And all of a sudden, they start following the dark side. This looks so good. 
This looks so tempting. Even smells good. Always remember the devil is a deceiver. And he will deceive you if you let him. Be careful how you entertain things. Even some of the good things he'll show you and draw you in if you're not careful. That's why I stay on the divine side. I live in the divine side, in the Holy Spirit. Be careful. Ephesians chapter 1, verse 3. Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who have blessed us with all spiritual blessings in heavenly places in Christ. Jesus Christ gave us the spiritual blessings to do the work. I want you to read that again. Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who have blessed us with all spiritual blessings in heavenly places in Christ. But you must stay there. Remember, all the heavenly blessings is, is for those that are living in the divine realm. Listen to this, or you actually you can write this down if you like. Living in the divine nature is a lifestyle. Living in the divine nature, in the Holy Spirit, in Christ Jesus, the Word of God, is a lifestyle. The Word of God is a lifestyle. Imitating Jesus Christ is a lifestyle. Getting and understanding the power of the Holy Spirit is a lifestyle until Jesus comes. It is not for just showboating. It's, 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 not, it's not for uh, this world to marvel. It's to show the power of the Most High God. But it's only through Jesus Christ. Many people marvel at miracles. And, but Jesus said it's not the miracle. But it's the relationship that I want you to focus on. It's not the miracles. The miracles are a bonus, a blessing. But my God, the word of God is the relationship. Are you in a close relationship with God? i leave you with this. Philippians 2 and 5. Let this mind be in you which was also in Christ Jesus, living in the word of God, the divine nature. God is calling you viewer supporters to the kingdom. God wants you, viewer supporters, and those that are here that do not have Christ, he is calling you to spend eternal life with him. I'm going to be with God. I'm going to be with Jesus Christ. They could say what they want about me. They could say this man, this and that, and everything else about me. I, I don't care. It's not about what they say because they said, Jesus said they hated me. Before they hate you. I'm going to see and be in heaven. But before that, my mind, body, and soul is already there. Because I have a relationship with the word of God, Jesus Christ. God wants you, viewer supporters, to be with him. God wants you to be saved. But it's up to you. It's all, I want you to always remember this because I always say this. Everything starts with a decision. Your salvation, your faith, 
your believing, your walk with God, everything starts with a decision. It is where your mind is. Where is your mind? Is it in Christ? Is it thinking about having Christ in your life? It is up to you. Those that do not have Christ, number one thing is your heart and mind have to be one. It has to be one. If you're making a decision to ask Christ into your life, you have to be one. Emotionalism will not work. I've seen it all through the years. Get hyped up over the word. You feel the presence of God. You, 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 you get emotional, but cannot live the life. It has to be a heart and mind decision. It has to be a heart and mind decision. I'm going into Acts 2.38. And I want you to really pay attention to this, those that do not have Christ. Acts 2.38. And it says, then Peter said unto them, repent. Repenting is asking God for forgiveness of your sin. Repenting is not telling God everything that you've done wrong. It's asking, asking God to forgive you of all your wrong and be baptized, every one of you, in the name of Jesus Christ for the remission of sin and ye shall receive the gift of the Holy Ghost, the Holy Spirit. Baptism is an outward obedience to God being submerged underneath water and when you come up as your heart and mind is one, you have now said to the world, I have left you. Thank you Jesus. I don't dance with the world no more. I dance with God. And I dance for God. Many people, I want you to get this, hear this, many people make the decision, but when they go in, down under water, they go down a devil and come up a wet devil. I want you to get this. Some people don't repent. They go through the motions of things. Handshakes and, and if you come to church, you're going to be all right. You have to give your life up first. Deny yourself. Pick up the cross and follow me. You must first deny yourself. This is what Jesus said. Pick up the cross and then follow me. As you go down in water, you are being cleansed. It's symbolic for being cleansed from this world. Now you are finally in the divine nature. And through your obedience to God, God will give you the gift of the Holy Spirit. Give me Romans 10 and 9 before we end. Romans 10 and 9. Read that for me. That if thou shalt confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus, and shalt believe in thy heart that God has raised him from the dead, Thou shalt be saved. You must confess with your mouth the Lord Jesus. I am saved now. I've repented. And now, Lord Jesus, 
is my life. And you must rehearse this. Read that again. That if thou shalt confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus and shall believe in thy heart. And you must believe. I told you, that's the key. Believing is the key. Some people have confessed. Some people said, I'm going to leave this life alone. But because of the temptations of the world, and the weak heart and the weak mind. They had not left that old life alone. But you must believe. Go ahead. And shalt believe in thy heart that God had raised him from the dead. Thou shalt be saved. Thou shalt be saved. You will support us and those that have repented, have asked God into your life. Contact me. I want you to contact me. It's very important that those that do not have a church home, a pastor, I'm not one that will leave you out in the cold. Contact me. The information will be there at the end of this message. Listen, I love you so much. I love you very much. Shalom, peace be unto you. And I want you to always remember this. 2 Timothy 1 and 7, For God hath not given us the spirit of fear, but of power and of love and of a sound mind. Shalom, peace be unto you. Thank you, Thank for, you for tuning into, into the, the Way of Holiness, holiness broadcast. broadcast. We hope that, we the, hope message that the message received, received, received and that it, and has, that it has brought you closer to God. To God. Or contact, or contact details, details are displayed, displayed on the bottom of the screen. Of the screen. Thank, you Thank you for your continued, for your continued support. support. We look forward, we look forward to, sharing to sharing with you. With you. So until so next time. time.